I feel like I've been very inconsistent with the channel over the past few weeks. And part of that was because of life. Part of that was because I was enjoying it with my friends and family. But then there was another part of it where I just had a lot of self-doubt. I would have videos ready to go and then I would not post them because I would think to myself, nobody needs this, this is not relevant. Or I would think, I've already said this so many times, you know, who needs to hear this? It's not important to, for someone to hear. And I'm not saying this because I, you know, I don't want anyone to feel bad for me or anything or, you know, I feel like I need encouragement because I, I know that, you know, sometimes I can think things that are not true. We all do, right? But I do just want to focus on just resetting my thoughts and refocusing on what I need to focus on. And I thought Philippians would be a great place to start. So if you feel like this would be helpful to you, then you can follow along too. I'm using my journaling Bible today and I'm looking at Philippians 4. I will read it and I'll start at Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. The book of Philippians is written by Paul and it is believed that he wrote it from the prison in Rome. He was imprisoned for preaching the gospel and eventually he was a martyr. Um, and so if he can preach and he, if he can write this letter um, and say these things, you know, rejoice while he's sitting in a prison, He's writing a letter to the church in Philippi. Then first and foremost, that just helps me to think, okay, my situation is not as bad as Paul. And if he can, you know, rejoice in the Lord regardless of his situation, then that's something that I need to hone in on and do as well. So the first thing that jumps out to me is when he says rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So rejoice reminds me of worship and i've done an entire bible study on worship if you want to check it out I, i'll have it linked but there's so much power in worship worshiping god is one huge tool that i use to get me out of a funk to refocus my mind to refocus on what's truly important which is serving him and just putting god at the center of my life so you know when talking about refocusing your thoughts and just getting back on track with your mind the first place to start for me at least is worship be thankful for the things that he has done then he goes on to say let your gentleness be evident to all the lord is near the lord is near and that statement within itself notice that there's no contingency to that the Lord is near regardless of how we act. The Lord is near us whether we are being super obedient or whether we sin. The Lord is near us at all times, always. He's always present and he is always near. It gives me great comfort and satisfaction to know that God is always with us no matter what. And because he is near, the next verse, verse 6, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving again that leads us back to rejoice when we rejoice you are you know you can practice that through worship but you can also think about things to be grateful for gratitude but also just following up with verse eight and nine verses eight and nine Paul says, finally, what is whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Part of the reason why we need to make sure that we're studying the word every day is not only to draw near to God, but as humans, we have feelings. And those feelings can either be helpful or they could be really detrimental. 
And sometimes our feelings will cause us to say and do things that we wish we didn't. And sometimes with anxiousness or feeling like you're not focused or whatever it is, sometimes that could be the cause of your thoughts. And so when Paul is saying here, the peace of God will transcend your understanding and guard your heart and your mind. And then he goes on to talk about your thought life. I think, you know, that of course that goes hand in hand. Sometimes our anxious thoughts are the things that make us anxious. So it's important to stop and think about what you're thinking about. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse five. It says, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And so assessing what you're thinking about, assessing, you know, if you're feeling anxious, for example, why am I feeling anxious? What am I thinking about? Are you worried about something that hasn't happened? I know that sounds strange to some people, but that's true. Sometimes I worry about things that they don't, they'll, they haven't happened. They will never happen, but I just think about it and I worry and that causes anxiety. But in order to gain that peace of God, part of that is to make sure that you're taking hold of your thoughts and think about here, whatever, you know, Paul says, he says, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, you can't sit and think about the way that people have hurt you day in and day out and then wonder why you don't have peace. You can't sit and think about your own feelings and think about, you know, the things that are only serving yourself and then wonder why you don't have joy. You have to be careful of what you're thinking about in order to keep your mind on the right path. I know that's such a general statement. So Paul, remember, he's sitting in a prison and he's saying, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace, right here, in the peace of God, and the God of peace, hand in hand, it goes hand in hand. So we can pray and ask God for peace all we want. We can pray and ask God to help us to not be anxious, help us to not feel depressed. And I know anxiety and depression are clinical and there are many resources that can help such as medication and counseling, but it's good to focus on what we can do as well. Right. And so just going back to this in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But be sure that you do your part, which is a first and foremost, get into your word. <laughs> Second, take hold of your thoughts. Think about what you're thinking about. So that's all I have for today. Let me know what you learned. I post a new Bible study video, or I try to, every Wednesday and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again.